Hi, Steve here at the SJCOE Fab Lab, and we're going to be looking at computer science. Well, math, science, computer science, all of them together, uh, because this is computer science support for uh, the Tracy Unified STEM unit, Cold as Ice. It is a seventh grade math uh, lesson. So let's go ahead and get started. Uh, before we go any further, I would like to talk about the computer science involved uh, in this lesson. Now, computer science uh, has five different categories, data analysis, computer systems, um, algorithms and programming, networks in the internet, and uh, impacts of computing. Um, all of these are important. Algorithms and programming is the, you know, the coding that you think of, but um, networks in the internet is key too. I mean, we're talking through a network through the internet, right? Um, which is a network of networks. Data and analysis is going to be important in this lesson. In fact, uh, we are going to be using or working on 6.8DA7 to represent data in multiple ways. And Paint 3D is going to be great for allowing students to creatively represent their data in multiple ways. We also have 6.8DA8, collect data using computational tools and transform the data to make it more useful. Okay, so how are we going to transform that data? 6.8DA9, test and analyze the effects of changing variables while using computational models. So if I change, in this case, the time, maybe, we might see something change, like volume, because what we're looking at as phenomena is the freezing of liquid water into a solid. Uh, last, lastly, uh, in algorithms and programming, we have 6-8 AP17, systematically test and refine programs using a range of test cases. So trying out different uh, possible temperatures, maybe, or amounts of time something is frozen, or maybe volumes that we start with would be ideal, uh, and seeing what happens, seeing if our model, our computer model is good. All right, so uh, let's go ahead and get started. We have two tools that we're going to be focusing on, Desmos and Paint 3D. Let's start with Desmos. So here we have Desmos. It is a really powerful uh, online graphing calculator. Let's get to the basics quickly. <clears throat> I'm going to click here on graphing calculator. By the way, you can get to Desmos at desmos.com. All right, the simplest thing that I can do on Desmos is to just type in a point. Let's go with the origin. Notice I can add a label. That can really help if we're trying to represent some information and we want others to be able to understand it. I could also Let's try writing a function. Oh, there we go. So we have a line f of x equals 2x. I could change that. Let's say I don't want it to be just a constant 2. Maybe I want it to be a variable like t. Now, I can adjust the value of t and change my graph. And that's kind of going to be key to what we're creating here. Um, we're going to be making a model, and we're going to use math for that model. And since we can have a variable here in Desmos, I can make it so the model changes with time. Notice how uh, by changing t, I cause uh, the graphic there to change. All right. So since what we're looking at is what happens 
when we freeze water, uh, what we could do, uh, and you all who are doing this uh, should have uh, different geometric shapes um, that you can fill with water and then freeze uh, and see how the volume changes. Uh, for instance, uh, this square, if you look closely, notice how it has expanded uh, because uh, I froze the water. In fact, I took some close-up photos of it. So here's this sample of water as a liquid and then as a solid. Notice we have some expansion. I could measure the volume uh, and see how it's changed. In fact, uh, I have uh, that data on our sway. So let's just go ahead and put in some values uh, for a possible uh, pair of values. Let's say that I have uh, my, my liquid volume and my solid volume. So uh, for the sake of argument, not as literal data, um, let's, let's look at a pair here. Let's say that I have uh, 35 millimeters uh, as a liquid state and uh, let's say 37 as a solid. Now, it looks almost as if nothing has shown up. And it, it's, well, we don't see it, but I can zoom out. Ah, there's the value. Our group can also test out other, or record other findings. Let's say uh, that we had a liquid that was 40 milliliters. Let's do a pair and then goes to 43. Okay. We can represent uh, what's going on here in a simple graph. In fact, uh, students can start to make predictions about what would happen if we changed our x value here. Let's look at another way that we could represent this. Here's a sample, much like the one that we got right here. I've defined the bounds of this box at y equals 0, kind of the bottom, at x equals 0 and x equals 20. And then I have here y equals 12 plus L, just choosing some letter that isn't taken. Um, for instance, x is kind of taken in graphs, as is r. Um, so here, I've tied this to t. T doesn't really show up. In fact, um, well, anyway, what I'm going to say is, well, I could take the two different values uh, that I measured, you know, when it was um, liquid and solid, and I can calculate where T uh, would end that up being. So I'm going to change my bounds and say, well, Maybe it's at uh, 2 uh, and 5. Yeah, who knows? OK. So now I can make this model. It's really not that different than writing a program. Um, essentially, what I'm doing is iterating over values of my variable t. Let's see what happens. Oh, 
look at how my cube is expanding. I'm making this model. Now, maybe this isn't giving you the values that you want. Try some different values for t. After all, one of our standards is looking at how our program changes by changing variables. All right, let's look at another program that we can use in order to learn uh, how we can represent our data. Uh, again, um, I, can, I can take pictures of what I've gathered here. Look, here's a couple. And I can open them up in Paint 3D. Okay. Now, let's gather data. Um, we can gather some uh, qualitative data and quantitative, right? If I take a picture of my uh, sample here, well, I can import that into Paint 3D. Let's go ahead, take a look at Paint 3D. I'm gonna make a new project. And I can go to the menu. And tell it, you know what? I want to browse files. I'm gonna start with this one that I've made already. Notice here, I have an image and I also added some explanation of my calculations. Notice I looked at my millimeters along here. And I made a 3D image. All right. Let's talk about how we could go about making something like this. I'm going to start a brand new project. New. There's several different modes that I can design in. Brush. I think I'm going to just go ahead. <laughs> I could do something as simple as crayon. Should not have tried to draw with my left hand. or maybe even a spray can. I can also use 2D shapes. Notice when I hit check, it's now kind of cemented onto my space. Again, I'm going to undo. I can also make a 3D creation. And, and that kind of brings us to uh, what you saw as the possible student um, work that I showed a minute ago. I could do something like adding in, oh, well, a cube. So I'm gonna go with orange this time instead of green. Oh, wow, okay. I can turn this 3D object, I can move it forward. around this way, which works out really well uh, for a project about three-dimensional shapes. And hit enter. All right, now that's there. Um, maybe I want to add in this. We can even draw. So I'm going to say that stays there. I'm going to doodle. Here we go. I need to make my way back to where I started. Oh, it kind of makes a blob. I'm going to go into the 3D view. Ooh, interesting. Forward. Very cool. So students can make their three-dimensional image. They can also even export it. They're going to menu and then save. And they can save it 
as a GLB file. And once they've done that, they can uh, import it into PowerPoint. Beyond that, they can even record uh, their presentation in PowerPoint and move around this three-dimensional object that they've made uh, while giving their presentation. All right, a couple of amazing tools. The kids will get to make uh, a great explanation of their findings having to do with uh, the expansion of water uh, as it freezes. I hope you and your students have a lot of fun working on this project. Bye.